Thank you. Hi, y'all. Yeah, my name is Lucen, they, them. Um, I'm going to introduce myself just to give a little bit of background info. You can check out my LinkedIn to learn more. Um, I have a couple of computer science degrees. I did not learn Python at MIT. It's crazy. A lot of MATLAB, Java, C++. Thankfully, a friend uh, told me about Python after I graduated. Uh, I got involved with Django and uh, Linode, and I moved to California from Boston to work at CloudKick, which is a tiny startup. I was acquired by Rackspace, which got me involved in engineering management. And so I've been doing engineering management for a long time. Rackspace, I went to Indiegogo. I currently work at Carrot, which is a company where we just do technical interviews. So tech companies have candidates. We interview them, tell them what the results are. Um, and so this is all to say that I've been on the management side of the negotiation table, but it takes two to negotiate. Um, I also started this small business with a buddy of mine, Adam Dangor, where we work for candidates. So we don't accept money from companies or venture capitalists. Um, we help individuals ace their interviews and negotiate the terms of their employment. Kind of like for celebrities or athletes, right? Um, so I'd like to share you know, these, you know, these tips, these skills that we've been honing with, with our clients. I'd like to share that with you all. Before I dig into that, I want to look at what holds us back from negotiating. Because we all know that negotiating is a helpful thing to do. Like we have friends who have done it. We've heard our coworkers have done it. We've you know, seen it online. But many people still don't negotiate or, or still don't feel good about those conversations. So what is holding us back? One thing is happiness. Like, oh, I just got this wonderful offer, and I'm excited to work here. And oh my god, these people are amazing. And they're, they're paying me some money that I could be content with. And that doesn't mean, just because you're happy in this moment, that you know, when you put the phone down, you're like, oh, did I, did I leave money on the table? Or you know, three months later, you, you're talking with a coworker. Wait, you got a signing bonus? Um, you know, so negotiation and self-advocacy, it's all about having a, you know, a tool in your tool belt that you can intentionally use when you want. So don't let being happy stop you, uh, but also congrats for being happy. Uh, socialization is another thing that holds people back. You know, at the end of the day, being a candidate and negotiating are skill sets and uh, anyone can work on them and it's valuable to work on them so you have it, you know, when you need it. Don't let that hold you back. Also, don't let fear hold you back. There's, there's times where you don't want to negotiate. You've decided, I, you know, I need to reduce this risk. I got to make rent this month. I don't have a job. They're offering me a job. Maybe you don't want to negotiate super hard in that case, and that's fine. It's an intentional decision. You're not acting out of fear. Um, you know, often folks are concerned about, um, you know, what if, you know, if I push too hard, are they going to rescind the offer? Are they, are they going to be dicks about it? Uh, is, am I going to tarnish my relationship with my manager? My manager not going to like me. And the point of a productive negotiation is that it, it builds the relationship. Like it wouldn't be helpful to negotiate in a way that destroys how people feel about each other. When you're negotiating with a recruiter or hiring manager, you're you're actually um, you know you're trying to work together to find out what you each want and where that overlap is and, and how you can move forward and make this work. Um, you'll see that in this in the rest of this talk. One of the number one things that you're going to be doing throughout a negotiation is saying how much you really want to work there and how much you really want to make this work and to find something that works for everyone. So uh, in, in my experience, the you know, there's nothing to be afraid of. Be positive, and it'll be fine. Uh, bullying. Now, now, just because you want to negotiate, sometimes it's still really hard. Um, you know, people you're talking with, say recruiters, they're doing the best they can in the situation they're in. Uh, but sometimes there's still anti-patterns. You know, it might not be from them. It's right, the, the company pressures. Um, there's things like exploding offers. You need to accept this offer tonight. We've got more candidates coming in tomorrow. I can't hold this open for you. You know, and that, <laughs> yeah, it's not great. And I know I'm talking to folks like this is the Bay Area and Silicon Valley, and people are like, oh, you, you know, you, 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 you just go work somewhere else if you encounter a bully. But, you know, we're, we're often in different situations, and, and sometimes people really are encountering, you know, uh, conversations where even if someone's being charismatic, they're still trying to really pressure you, and that can, that can feel bad. And so that can, it can be really helpful to have, you know, if not a coach, some, a third party, someone looking out for you who can kind of help you work through that stress. Because uh, it's going to be a really stressful process, no matter what, because it's such a big decision that you're having to make. Uh, so you know, don't let the bullies win. You should definitely negotiate in those cases. Um, or not, that's actually not true. You should you should uh, assess the risk and you know make an intentional decision. But you know, we don't want the bullies to win. Um, another reason people don't negotiate is misplaced trust. So recruiters and hiring managers, um, you know, really they're they're on your side. You know, whoever whoever you're talking with. 
when you're as your as your candidate. I mean, they're excited to work with you. They've just given you an offer. They they want this to work out. Um, but that doesn't mean that their incentives are exactly aligned with yours. They're also just different humans, and they want different things in in, in life. Uh, and they're not going to know what you want unless you say it. Um, and so, um, you know, maybe you're not going to get a signing bonus unless you ask. Well, why, why not ask? Or, um, you know, often we do hear people saying, well, this is the max. You know, here's our salary range, and this is the max we can offer. And we don't make exceptions. And I'm, I don't know if I'm happy or sad to report this to you, but like half the time with our clients, someone comes back and says, well, we've made an exception. <laughs> <We're> like, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, they just misspoke initially. And look, if there's going to be exceptions, why not you? Um, the last reason people don't negotiate is a misunderstanding about when they're actually negotiating. So in the hiring process, uh, at Dangor Mendel, we break it down into three steps. There's the application phase, whether that's an actual application or you're submitting a resume and cover letter or it's like a referral and you just talk to someone and have coffee. You're doing things to get to the interview like, stage, right? That's, that's, your, that's your goal, just get to the interview stage, right? And your goal of the interview stage is to knock everyone's socks off and impress everyone so you get an offer that you can actually negotiate. And early on in that application stage, often someone will ask you, like, What's, what salary are you looking for? Um, and they're just trying to figure out that you're in the right ballpark so that you're not wasting each other's time. And that's actually useful for you, yourself as well. And we're going to talk about what to, how to answer that question. But whatever you say then, if you reveal some information, that's not, that's not the end of your negotiation. You haven't just committed to anything. You know they're going to be learning a lot about you through this interview process, right? They're gonna, you're you're going to be impressing them. Uh, you're going to be learning about them, the company, this role. You're going to be learning about the market, other opportunities. So you know only once you have an offer in hand, that's when you're actually negotiating. And and we can reset um, some of those expectations at that point if you know if you feel like you went in too low. Okay. So point being, negotiation is hard, uh, and I would be remiss if I didn't ad address the fact that. You know, things are slanted against you when you're a, can a candidate, right? You, you have less power in this situation. The company has a, has a lot of power in three specific ways. One, whoever you're talking with has more information than you. They know what the actual salary ranges are. They, they know what they can offer. They know, they know how things work. They know what other candidates have been offered and accepted. They might even know what other people, you know, earn on this team. They might, you know, there's all sorts of information they have. You don't have it. They also have more authority here at the end of the day. Company gets to decide whether to give you an offer and um, you know, what those terms are going to be. And it's also their job, right? Whoever you're talking with, they've been, they've been having these conversations before, right? Uh, no matter how many times you've switched jobs, it's, it's likely that you haven't, you know, that you're not as comfortable with this skill, right? Because your job is actually to be, you know, a great engineer or, or whatever, right? Uh, in fact, you're actually probably working on skills like how to collaborate and, you know, figure out a stand-up time that's a compromise for everyone and fair. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, they're going to have a little bit of that, that leverage on you. And so what you want to do is, is uh, you know, equalize this relationship. You want to you have a nice, healthy interaction because this interaction is the start of, of a long-term you know, employment relationship. You want that to be healthy. You don't want to come in with regrets. You're going to continue talking about your performance and, and raises and promotions and you know, what work responsibilities do you want, right? This is just the first conversation in a series. So uh, how can you go about that in a healthy way? And you know, ultimately, you're going to meet each of those points like point, for, point by point, right? Like, get information. Go on Glassdoor, go on the internet. There's anonymous surveys. Um, you know, try to, you know, every company and role, it's like a unique snowflake. And it's hard to put it all together. You know, it would be lovely if, the, if there was just this database of everything exactly that you could correlate. Um, but you know, do your best to understand the situation. Talk to your friends, your network. If you can talk to someone who works at that company that you're negotiating with, or maybe who used to work there, hey, maybe ask them. If not for their exact you know, compensation details, but you know, how do things work here? What, you know, what is the range? Uh, are there signing bonuses? That kind of thing. Um, of course, you can ask the recruiter or whoever you're talking with at the company. To, to, these are reasonable questions to ask. And we'll get into that. Um, and at the end of the day, also, you're going to want to do a lot of soul searching because these aren't arbitrary numbers. What, you know, at the end of the day, you're the one who gets to make a decision. Uh, you know, that, that's what you get to control. You don't have authority, but you get to decide what opportunity you, you pick. And so these numbers just have to be meaningful to you. Essentially, what we're going to talk about is you want to know what your, what your minimum number is below which you would not accept the job and then what your, like, your I'm excited number is, you know. Um, because that's you want to try to get above that one. Uh, we want to leave the door open for 
between minimum and excited. Uh, so you can't combat uh, authority. You know, you're not going to have more authority in this situation, but you can increase your leverage with other offers. Um, this is called a best alternative to the negotiated agreement, a BATNA. If you don't have other offers, maybe you are really happy where you're currently working. That's leverage. Uh, and maybe you're not really happy because <laughs> that's why you're looking, but they don't need to know that. <laughs> right? <laughs> Always be positive. Um, um, you know, and this may not be your job to you know, be a candidate or to no negotiate, but we can work on these skills. So let's do that. Um, I, I will spend most of the time talking about the negotiation conversation itself, but let's just talk about the application stage real quick because uh, sometimes compensation comes up in that stage. Now, the thing about when you're applying to work somewhere that your number one goal is to get to the interview stage, okay? You can fix a lot of things after that. You're, you know, uh, you're just, you're trying to get, you're trying to get move on, okay? Keep your eye on that prize, um, right? So let's pretend uh, we have an oracle that knows exactly what a company would be willing to pay for a job, for, for, you know, for someone to do this work. This isn't necessarily the range they're telling you. They might have said, oh, well, We'll pay up to you know 150, and it turns out there's actually a higher range. Um, but you know, if if you could know this, this would be amazing, right? Because then you would try to get at the top of this range. Um, and there's this concept called anchoring, which is in a negotiation, whatever number gets said first, whether they say it or you say it, you know, you're going to be negotiating from that anchor point. You know, so. Um, let's say, um, and we'll actually talk about that maybe a little, a little bit later, but the, the point is, you know, at the application, say, say for whatever reason, you end up revealing what compensation you're looking for. And sure, I recommend don't reveal if you, if you, you don't have to, but sometimes you do. And, it, and it's, not a, it's, it's fine if you do, because right at the end of the day, you do have to have numbers. You're gonna have to tell the recruiter something eventually. You would just rather do it once you had an offer, and we're actually negotiating, right? So say you say something, it turns out to be too low. Um, maybe they eventually, you know, you go through the interviews, you get an offer, and it's going to be wherever it is at based on their corporate, you know, their rules, HR, how you did on your interviews, um, maybe an additional conversation you have at the end of the in interview process. Oh, you know, I've been, you know, I've been doing more research and actually I think, you know, this is what I'm expecting. This is what I think the market is doing. And then you're going to negotiate up from there. And it, you know, you never know. It might happen the other way, right? You might apply. You might in the application space say, I'm looking for this. And, and um, you go through the interview process and they give you an offer down here and you're still going to try and raise that, okay? Um, and the main thing is to do research so that you can navigate this space, you know, with as much, you know, insight as they have because they know all of their numbers anyway. Um, right, and these are the two points you really want to know. Like, what is the amount before, you, you know, once you have an offer and you know you're going to negotiate, you want to go into that conversation knowing, before you're in that stressful conversation, what is your absolute minimum? And you know, what, would be, what are you really excited about? OK, so first of all, you might get asked, what is my previous salary? Uh, and in California, that's actually illegal right now. Yay. Um, <laughs> yeah, right? It is none of their business. Um, just in case, maybe, I don't know if some, hey, the last speaker was from Florida. Um, <laughs> good luck, buddy. No. Um, look, here's the thing. It's actually, I, I just want to share this because it's also a good mental model to have. Sometimes you're asked other things you don't want to reveal. Um, one of the things you can say is, you know, my, my current contract doesn't allow me to reveal that information, and, and it's important to me that I honor my word. Um, if they really push you, how does that, how would that work as a recruiter? <laughs> well, after class, we'll talk about this. <laughs> um, but no, in my experience, recruiters often um, value that. You can also say, I'm just really uncomfortable revealing that right now, but I'm so excited you know, to work, you know, I'd be so excited to work at Goodco and to have this opportunity. Can we, you know, I, and, I, and I, you know, I've looked at, you can ask the recruiter for, wait, what is the range? I think that works for me. I'd like to move forward, you know, and I, I can get back to you, but don't get back to them about it. <laughs> just move forward. Um, okay, so what if they ask you what compensation are you looking for? That's harder, that's harder to avoid. I mean, you can say, look, I'm, I'm looking for a competitive offer. You know, money's not my, my primary motivator, that, that sort of thing, right? Um, and sometimes, look, anchoring isn't bad. If you've done your research, why not, why not you know, put something out there that's very reasonable at the high end? I actually think that's actually your ideal thing to do is to kind of control that conversation. If you have no idea, and, and if you looked at you looked at the research, like Devrel right now, man, salaries all over the place. So you know maybe that's a situation where you try not to anchor it. But often it's actually not a big, not a problem to do it. And you can you can fix things later. Um, and so you can ask you know, ask the recruiter what's the compensation for this range for this for this role. Maybe they give you a range, and then you pick the highest number. Don't respond with a range, even if they ask you for a range. Just say I'm looking 
hey, I'm looking for a competitive salary around 140. You know, and that's like the max of whatever range you or the recruiter have, have been talking about. Um, and I just want to, before I move on, uh, address, you know, what if you know that your like current salary is like ridiculously high, or maybe you're changing careers, and you just know that you're up here and this role is down here, but you're still really interested. You're, you're trying to change jobs or whatever, right? Change locations, um, and you don't want to be discounted. Um, that can be a problem. You want what you want to say, and this kind of softening can work. You, know, you might use this sort of softening in other times. Um, you know, I'm looking for. You know, this is what I'm looking for, but I understand this is a career change. I'm, ha I'm happy to be flexible when it comes to salary. So you can you can soften what you're saying, especially if it's a conversation. If you're just filling out a form, just try to get your number in the right place for the automated form to get move you to an interview or to move you to, to where you can talk with someone. But you're talking with someone, you can soften it. Money's not my main motivator. Be positive. You're you're trying to tell them I really want to work here and I'm worth you investing time in me, and eventually you investing time in advocating for me to get a higher salary. Okay, application stage. Great. You move on to the interview stage. I don't have a lot to say about negotiation here. Your main task is to prepare as much as possible so that you can impress everyone you're speaking with so they can be really excited to hire you. So that makes them want to give you a really nice offer. It's a little bit of leverage. You know, the more excited they are to hire you. This, this makes sense and it's probably obvious. Um, but I would actually say, you know, a lot of people, they start working on like algorithms and, and the tech side of things, which is great. But um, really work on communication because you can move that needle a lot. Uh, in, t in terms of how you impress people and the story you tell about yourself and how you position yourself. Because leveling starts to become, when it comes to negotiation, leveling is like one of the big movers, right? So work on communication and, and really practice that if you can. Do, do much of practice interviews. Um, yeah, because you know at the application stage, before your interviews, they don't really know a lot about you. They're not that excited. You want them to be super excited by the time they're giving you that offer. It's also OK if they're not. Maybe they're giving you an offer and you're and like, they're not that excited. It's OK. You're still going to negotiate. <laughs> Um, so let's dig into that. I'm going to go through a bunch of examples. I just want to set the, the mental model, the big picture here. First, always be positive. Um, but just because you're being positive, and I just want to actually go back to be positive, because sometimes we might think, oh, if we're cagey, like, oh, I'm not, you know, I don't know how I feel about this job, that's going to make them come back with more money. No. They're actually going to think, I'm not going to waste my time with this person. So actually, the I mean, this isn't a you know, hard and fast rule, but like the more positive, the more you can build this relationship. In this particular case, the employment, it's a long-term relationship, is actually really going to help. So be positive, but just because you're being positive uh, doesn't mean that you're making a decision. You're not saying yes just because you're excited to work there, right? You're not saying no. Before you make a decision, uh, you're going to do two things, and one is assert what you want so they know. Otherwise, you can't negotiate if they don't know that you want something. And you're going to ask questions and explore this space. You're going to keep doing that until you feel ready to make a decision. And for what it's worth, I recommend making the policy for yourself right now that you don't make a decision you know, in, on the phone call. And that way, you can always just tell the other person, I'm, I'm so excited. This looks good. Uh, I look forward to reviewing the, you know, the email. And it's just a policy of mine where I, I, I don't make the decision right away. I, I'd be happy to get back to you like tonight or tomorrow or whatever. And then you go and like, talk to your negotiation coach and we like, like get the right wording. OK, let's look at some examples. So someone's given you a great offer. Of course, you're going to be positive. It's really wonderful. I'm so excited to work here. La da la da. OK. Let's say you were hoping for 150. They come up with a higher offer. I know this is crazy. It looks great. I just, I'm just going to spend a little bit of time here because it's so easy in this situation to give up and be like, OK, cool, I'm in. And you know, I just want to say, like, what if you still want to negotiate? Because you might be thinking, well, am, am, I, leaving, you know, am I leaving something on the table? Right, because maybe your expectations were you, you maybe you couldn't do a lot of research and you don't know if your expectations were even reasonable. So um, again, congrats, you should be really happy here. But <laughs> what can you say? I, I like to do something pretty soft because you're not trying to introduce risk here. And something soft you can you can say is you know is is there any room to negotiate? And because either you know, they might say no, this is like well, actually above our salary range. You're going to be earning more than anyone else on the team, but we really want to hire you. Um, and you might say, like, OK. Um, or they might say, uh, very likely, when you ask questions like this, they're going to say, well, what, are you, what were you thinking? Yeah, maybe we could go higher, but like, what were you thinking? And you know, I would say, you know, pick some number, whether you're going to add like five or 10,000. And you're just going to ask, like, hey, can, you know, I was actually, you know, they offered 165. I was actually thinking 170. And see what happens. And you're not trying to have a huge back and forth. It's like, it's going to work or not. And then you're going to, then that's going to be it, probably, because you're, you're relatively happy. You're not trying to, 
you know, sour or anything. Um, I put this I put this question up. Could we round up to 170? <laughs> because I think this is a really fun way to respond in a lighthearted way to, um, you know, who you know, I like round numbers. <laughs> I like zeros. Like who's gonna like, you know, it's, it's practice saying that in a mirror. It's, it makes everyone laugh. But seriously, if you get an offer with like that's funky, like 153, be like, oh, what about? Can we round up to 155? Or you get something. I I know this sounds goofy. I've seen it work at 90. Can we round up to 100? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> great. Um, so try that. Um, now, just because that sounds great, doesn't mean you don't don't ask the second question, which is, yeah. Now let's talk about a signing bonus, especially in the Bay Area. That's very common, right? So um, don't forget to to ask. OK, well, if only that would always be the case that happens, uh, our expectations are met. Um, sometimes you're, you're hoping for a higher amount. You're expecting something higher, and the initial offer is lower. What do you do? You're going to have to assert what your number is. There's no way around that. You can't negotiate unless you tell the person you're talking with what you're looking for. So what are some ways you can say that? You can directly say, I'm looking at roles around 165. You can say, I'm looking for a competitive offer. Um, and it's in the region of 165. Don't give a range. <laughs> um, you can reference other roles. You can say, I'm looking at other. Don't lie. If you don't have other offers, don't ever say, oh, I have other offers. But it's a, you're doing research, and you can talk about other things you're looking at. And I like this statement. You know, is there any way that we can get close to that? Because you're not trying to demand. You're at no point saying, this is my minimum. Because also, it's not, right? And if it's not your minimum, don't say anything that you're going to regret. Because as soon as it looks like it's not going to work, it's really easy for this other person you're talking to to want to, you know, they don't want to waste time with you, right? Um, so is there any way we can get close to that? Now you're going to start exploring different options, right? Um, maybe with salary, you know, eventually once you've exhausted salary, you, you know, you'll move on, maybe you can, signing bonus to other vacation and other things. Um, and, and whatever your priorities are, you know, the list doesn't have to look, maybe salary for what it's worth. Uh, sometimes we work with people and we're actually just trying to get them, you know, a four day a week job or something. Um, but We'll talk about numbers here. It's easy. Um, another thing you can reference, oh, and by the way, if you do have other offers, it's totally fine to mention them. Um, but again, be really clear that I'm so excited for good, you know, to work at Goodco. It's the top of my list. Like, how can we make this work? I have this other offer for 165. Can you, know, can you meet that? You know, okay, if not, you know, how close can we get to that? Um, you can mention the responsibilities for the role, again, leveling. You know, the person you're talking to may not exactly understand where, you know, where, where you're at. So try and talk through that. Um, Oh, I'm at you know a level two versus a level three, or I thought I was going to have some management, or well, I'm also you know I also have this deep expertise in uh, you know interview best practices, and I can come in and, and help you know share that you know stuff like that. Um, can we meet in the middle? It's classic. <laughs> um, I actually prefer instead of going directly to meet in the middle. How high can you go? I know that seems gutsy to say, but look, we know that's that's what you really want to know. They know that you really want to know that. And they're going to be really comfortable having a conversation about whatever. You might as well assert the thing that you want to have a conversation about, right? Like you're, you're not, you're not bullying them. You're not forcing anyone's hand. Uh, you're just trying to be open with them about what you want and see what happens. How high can you go? Keep practice that like every night before bed for the rest of this month. <laughs> um, another thing you can say is I would be really excited to accept, you know, 160 or you know, uh, or whatever. The the point with this is what you're saying. What you're kind of saying is, oh, I was expecting 165. You know, I'm going to have to think about 150. That's a hard decision for me to make. You know, I'm really excited, but I'm going to have to think about that. What I know right now is that I'm really excited. I would be really excited to accept you know, this thing. And maybe, um, you know, maybe they're trying to close this you know, today, and they would like that certainty. Um, and I just want a quick, a quick aside. What if their initial offer is quite a bit lower than what you're expecting? And that's disappointing. Um, I don't think you want to, you can use the same language we just talked about, but you're going to want to adjust your expectations. Because if you come back and say, I'm looking for 165, they're going to be like, well, good luck with that. Um, you know, like, how are we going to make this work? So, you know, adjust it to, you know, the whatever, you know, a lower range, 150 to 160, 140 to 150, something like that. Um, cool. So let's move on to the end game, because you're going to have, oh, did you, did you want to take this picture? Yeah. Um, please tweet me your pictures because I actually want pictures for my site. <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah, these are these are good. Uh, stay calm, comic. If you if you want to, it's my knuckles, which are really small. Uh, I'll give that give that info at the at the, at the end of the talk. Uh, but seriously, take pictures and tweet them to me. It would be great. Um, cool. And I know we have five minutes left. Uh, so, where did we get to? Oh, yes, end game. So. Um, 
yeah, so it's possible. Let's say you're ending, you know, you wanted 165, you would have accepted anything above 150. You're actually thrilled. You're like, oh, I got an extra 5,000. This is fun. Um, you don't necessarily need to decide right away. You, I'm really excited. I, 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 let me think about this. You also say, hey, this was a hard decision. Maybe they, maybe you've left things. A recruiter says, well, let me. I need to go check with the VP of engineering and get back to you. And that's fine. Let's leave that. You know, we'll talk tomorrow. That's not a problem. And just don't forget to then say, that's great. Um, so can we talk about a signing bonus, <laughs> right? Or can we talk about vacation? Or can we talk about an education, you know, fund or, or whatever is important to you, right? You want to explore the full space. You're not a greedy person for wanting to explore the full terms of, of this agreement. Um, now let's say. OK, let's say that the number is lower than what you would accept. Now, this is where we open up a little bit of risk, where we open the possibility that things might not work out. So you have to really be certain before this, before this conversation, like, oh, I, I, you know, they've offered me 140, but I would not accept anything under 150. Um, what can you say in that case, you know, to still try and push, you know, maybe there's still a way to make this work. Um, but you know, it might not work out, but what can you say? I like, you know, I would love to join, but I can't at that number. You know, if you don't assert what you want, it's not going to happen. So better give it a shot. Uh, I also think, you know, saying, you know, and this is, I would say, really great self-advocacy advice, whether it's negotiation or in work or wherever, you know, this doesn't work for me. It's kind of saying this, you know, it's a, I'd like to have a serious conversation where we find something that does work. Um, so I hate to end on the, on the downer of things not working, but that's how it goes with this talk. So um, I'm, we ha I know I didn't leave a lot of time for questions, so I'd be happy to uh, talk with me after, email me, please tweet me pictures. Um, and yeah, now I'm happy to talk about these difficult situations and give advice. Thank you. And, oh, OK. Yes. Yes, yeah, stock options. Um, oh. I mean, I think, so the question is, what do you do about stock options? And it's, and I mean, the, the, the process is the same in terms of like you do, do research and you say like, you know, based on my research, I was expecting, you know, 20,000 versus 15, you know, can, you know, what can we do to get closer to that? There's other companies offering this. Um, it's kind of similar. Uh, to be honest, we don't do, I actually don't do a lot of negotiation with stock options just because it's monopoly money. <laughs> and you, you, like usually, I mean, it depends, and you do research about the company, and you might believe, you know, hey, I work for a startup right now. I really think we're going to do great. Get get all the stock options you can. But um, yeah, it depends on your priorities. Um, and I, I think that's mostly there's external research and there's internal research and soul searching. And you might say, I'm ready to, I want to work somewhere where I'm really invested, and maybe even salary is not the most important thing. Sometimes companies will offer you two 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 offers, where they've let, you know changed the the ratios, right? Yeah. Oh, another question? Yes. Yeah. I mean, this is, it's a similar idea of what is your, in a sense, what is your leverage? Like, you can assert what you want. You can say I'm I'm doing more interviews next week that they're going to wrap up next week, and I'd you know I'd like to make a decision when I have all of the offers on the table, and then they can either say okay that sounds good or it doesn't, and then you have to decide like what works for you. If you um, you know you might say I can't make a decision tomorrow. So what you could also do because also I think that's more of like a bullying tactic. I mean if it's like on the matter of days or like a day or a week, I'm just like. Really, you can't wait for this two-year or you know whatever year relationship to start, um, or to, to become you know. Um, you could accept and then a week later potentially change your mind. You shouldn't like. <laughs> look, 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 look. There's it's a, it's a spectrum. I don't recommend I don't recommend lying. I don't recommend you know. But like there's you and you're not gonna hide it from them. Like you, you've had this conversation and you've said this is what I want. Like I actually want to make the decision next week. You know, and then they could say no, and then you could say, well, I am really excited to work here, and I'd like to accept. And they kind of know that, like, a week later, I mean, you could kind of, this might not be the decision everyone, that everyone would make, but, yeah. Um, I had that uh, last year. Uh, this one company gave me a 
floating buffer, 24 hours, and my whole contribution phase is this. How you respond to that makes a difference whether that action is float in 24 hours or seven days. The way I responded, I was able to make 24 hours last for seven days, and eventually I assigned somebody else, but they never exploded until eight days later because I was still, ex the way I told them why I can't make the decision, it's really hard for them to kind of, you know, rescind offer if it's about family and, and whatever it is. Yeah. So make sure that you don't just say, oh, okay, uh, no, or oh, okay, yes. Yeah. They're human, too. Yeah. I'll repeat for the mic as you said, hey, let's try and keep keep things open, make a one day exploding offer last seven by, you know, especially if you have good reason. But I just want to say everyone has a good reason to wait, at least overnight. And certainly if you have other things happening, if you have family, uh, just share your reasons and um, yeah, try to try to work with someone in a respectful way. And if you're being treated disrespectfully, that's where I think that we all have our own sense of like what our boundaries are and how we want to, you know, react. But uh, yeah. Don't be overly don't be overly scared. Yeah. Okay. Uh, go ahead, and I'll I'll happily chat with you guys after. Yeah. Sorry, two questions. So the time is money. So let's say you are interested in getting more paid time off than. Mm -hmm. That's is it on the table also? Yeah. It, it, what if you what if your priority is time off instead of a salary? Yeah. It's the same. It's, it's gonna be the same idea. You're gonna. Uh, I mean, ideally, it's not. Okay, I have two thoughts on this. On the one hand, once you have the offer, it's a lot easier to negotiate. You don't want to say anything before you have an offer that would make them not want to move forward with you. Um, that said, you know, it's not like you want to surprise surprise everybody. And so, um, if you can talk, if that's something you can be talking about with your recruiter from the beginning, and know that you're not wasting each other's time, I think that's valuable. But then you go about it in the same way, and you just say, "This is what's important to me. You know, how can we make this work?" Um, one thing that's not in this talk is if someone tells you six, uh, oh, six months from now you'll get a raise, or, or, or six months from now we'll evaluate, you know, four days a week. Look, that's great if that happens, and that's between you and your manager. Uh, but yeah, that's not part of your employment agreement right now. So don't make your decision based on that. It's uh, that you know that would be a nice thing to have happen, but yeah, they'd never get honored. I'm sorry. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs>